Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and today Wahoo have announced their upcoming Summit Freeride feature on the Element Bolt 2 and the Element Roam 2 cycling GPS units. Now today is an announcement only, the feature will be rolling out on May the 2nd so in just under two weeks time, but I can give you a pretty good lowdown on what's what and how this all works after using this for around a month or so on big hills, small hills and Trust me, that was a really, really steep hill. The camera just didn't do it justice. So I have spent a lot of time with this new feature out on the roads and the trails, as you've seen. So in this video, I'll cover off what this feature is, how it currently works, and we'll look into that one additional feature that Wahoo are doing that both Garmin and Hammerhead aren't. All right, let's get stuck into the details. Now, one thing to remember with all of this, this is with a free ride. And so not following a route. No, you don't have to predefine where you're going and sync it over and hit go and navigate. None of that, this is just riding along. And when you are now just riding along with this update, here's what you're gonna get. You'll get an upcoming climb list on the current projected path or the road that you're riding. The identified climbs will be shown on the base map with chevrons. You'll get notifications that a climb is about to start and you'll get a little bit of information about that climb. You'll get a summit climbing page with configurable data fields. So when you're on the climb, you can have all the stats that you need. There's also summit specific data fields that can be used on other pages too. And this is very, very cool when you want to customize the experience of what you're seeing on your head unit. There is a completed climbs list, although there's no deep analysis of those just yet, that is coming soon. And last but not least, the look ahead elevation profile feature that the others aren't doing at the moment. This is super cool and definitely worth having, even if you're not much into climbing, it will give you a look ahead on your current road or path and give you an indication of what's coming up. So even when the climbs aren't steep enough to be detected as a climb, you'll still know if you're doing this or doing this or this or this or whatever. You'll see it in action in just a moment. But before getting to that, remember to hit subscribe on this channel to keep things ticking along. It really does help out here on YouTube. Okay, with that, let's get out on the road and see this new feature in action. Okay, first up, out on the road, we have my standard five climbs route that I use to test all climbing functionality on head units and upcoming climbs listed. It's already detected the first climb successfully. And as I switch over to the map screen, I can see the upcoming path with the chevrons and the elevation profile there indicating the road is about to head up. On the top right hand side of the screen there, I've revived verb edit so I can get a profile overview of the entire route that I'll be doing. And in green there are the locations that the Rome 2 did detect climbs. Now aside from the little blip just here, it did a very, very good job of detecting the five climbs on my route. All right, let's jump ahead and join Mrs. Llama as we approach the start of climb number one. Okay, as we approach the start of climb number one, we have grade average and distance of climb flipping over there on the top of the screen and distance to start as we pass through this intersection here. And it is correctly identified that I will be going forward, not turning left or right. And in just a few seconds, the summit page will pop up and start a climb. So there we have summit number one, three second watt average, which is what I've configured. We have 2K to go. Great average for this point to here is zero. And yes, just scaring the birds off there. And ascent to go as well, 62 meters or 61 meters now. And away we go. Approaching under 100 metres to go and I'm topping out on the summit or the physical summit right about here and still around 60 metres to go. Now after using Garmin, Hammerhead and now Wahoo's free ride functionality for climbs extensively, it's not uncommon for the start and finishes to be plus or minus 50 to 60 metres. Alright, now summit has automatically finished there, it's come up on the completed climbs list. Now only once the head unit has a high level of confidence in knowing which path I'm going to be taking or which road I'm going to be on, will it then update its upcoming elevation profile. So you can see here it's kept it pretty close on, only a few meters shown there. And it's not until I get down and around the corner where it's pretty confident that I'm heading back into town that will then pop up the new elevation profile of what's coming up. Okay, approaching climb number two proper. 
not taking into account the small little blip before that one. And it has, again, correctly identified climb number two, 2.4 kilometres in length from the start of where it's going to start, 4.6 grade average, and starting in about 100 metres as we pass some alpacas. Always nice to see alpacas out on a ride. And from here, everything is as expected. Starting off with the climb indication there. And up comes the climb, and the summit page has made itself active on the computer there. Now, I don't actually use the summit screen for most of my riding. I usually just flip straight to the map screen because we have the chevrons, we have the elevation profile, and if you like, you can put up things like three second uh, power averaging and other information on screen. I'll show that in just a little while on the mountain bike tests that I've been doing. But this is the main screen that I've been using out on the road to see what's coming up. Jumping ahead to near the summit of this climb, and like Pac-Man, we've eaten all the chevrons. There's only a few to go. And here is where showing the map screen and the elevation profile really comes into its own. So it's not only showing the top of the climb and that's it, like the summit page does. This shows us that there's a descent coming up after as well. So if we want to go hard in an area we don't know, a road we don't know, well, we can go extra hard here because we know there's at least a kilometre and a half of descent coming up after this climb. The next three climbs were all detected as expected on this five climbs route and including the descent. On the way back into town, this feature is all about climbing. However, it does show us the descending that's going to take place as well when it knows the path that we're on. I will be doing a full three-way comprehensive head-to-head -head test of all these free ride climbing capabilities of these units at a later date, but just two instances that I'll pull up here as a bit of a preview for this video. And this is how the Summit free ride will stitch a climb together when you change route. So turning left here off the main road, the Karoo will finish the climb and start a new one in a minute. The Edge 840 with the Climb Pro will stitch the climb together to a new climb and the Summit free ride also just stitched the climb together to have a new Summit. So including this as Summit number two, so climb number two and creating a new finish. Now, where was that new finish? Well, I gave a bit of a hint in my Edge 840 review. Let's have a look how far up the climb the element detected the KOM was. And here we go, right at the top. The element unit got this absolutely correct with the other two being about two, three to 400 meters down the road. But, hmm, not quite science, bit of art to it but happy to see the element get this one right and also get that upcoming gradient right. It's time to head downhill. Okay, as I ride the Doctor's Gully Road climb here on the gravel bike with the Element Bolt version two, I will pull up the configuration options within the Element app to show you what options there are for this new feature. So scrolling down here, we jump into Summit Segments and we have options for Always On, Routes Only, which is the traditional way, or Off entirely. Climb detection, we can have all climbs, medium and large, or large only. Now things are changing a little bit there with what's considered an all climb or a medium to large. So I'll leave that for now. We'll dig into that at a later date. Automatic page change to bring up the Summit Segments live page at the start of each climb. Notifications on other pages and enable during planned workouts. So they're the current configuration options. And I do believe there's a couple of more options coming before this goes live with the public release on May 2nd. But that's the configuration as they are now, as I hit the top of this climb. And another example of the upcoming elevation profile being very, very handy out on the gravel bike. So the upcoming climb there, not too steep, but there is a little red bit in the middle there indicating that it has a bit of a pinch to it. Not enough to be detected as a climb, but I do know it's coming up and I can prepare myself for it. So here we go, over the top, and just after that, a really, really nice downhill. And the final road test or off-road test is mountain bike. And the answer is yes, it does a pretty good job of detecting climbs out on the trails. So coming into a climb here, when the look ahead had realized that, yes, I am silly enough to be doing this climb right here. It's gonna pull it up at the last minute drawing the chevrons and then punching me straight into the climb mode. And you'll see the elevation profile up on screen there. And I didn't quite believe it, having not ridden this road before, but a little further down the road, yeah, a bit of a reality check. That elevation profile was correct. 
and this ride was absolutely brutal. Next was my standard deviation off the main roads and onto a cross-country trail, which confuses things just for a few seconds on all three head units, but we'll see the element roam detect that I'm on the cross-country climb right about now. Tell me a climb coming up. And there we go, into climb mode. I'll then switch it back to map mode. Zoom in one, and away we go like Pac-Man. We follow the chevrons all the way to the top. Given I'm always using the map page and not the summit climbing page, I'm going to stop up here and reconfigure things on the fly, like you can with the Element app, and display a summit data field and also my three second average power data field on this map screen here. So pulling out the Element app, reconfiguring things on the fly, I click on the elevation page just here, but that's not the one I'm after. What I'm after is map. Right, click on the right one, Llama. There we go, map. We add a data field, we go to climbing, scroll down, and there's a ton of data fields from Summit Segments Live, and distance remaining. So how far do I have to ride before I get to the top? We can add that to the screen, that's added in real time. We're gonna add power as well. Three second average, where are you? Right down the bottom there somewhere. Bang, three seconds power, and as easy as that. Two data fields configured now, so I've got exactly what I want on screen for the riding that I'll be doing. And not too far down the road, on the next detected climb on the Rome 2, switch off the Summits climbing page on to the map page, and now I have metres to go. So how far do I have to ride to get to the top there? Three second average power. I have the chevrons on screen there on the top down map overlay. And on the elevation profile, I've got what's coming up for the climb, and I've got a good indication there's some downhill coming straight after. So there it is, the Wahoo Element Summit Freeride functionality tested both on-road and off with some pretty good results. Now a few things before finishing off this video today. Why only the Bolt 2 and the Rome 2 cycling computers? Well, these are the only units that have the elevation profile data stored on them. The previous generations of both of these don't have a lot of space. The original Rome 1 had only four gig of space. This has got 16 and the original Bolt only had 2.78 gig of space. So not a lot of room to store the maps required for this functionality. Now we have to remember that all these climb freeride functionalities on across all the manufacturers do rely on two things. That's the algorithm used to detect climbs and project the path that you're going to be riding and the underlying base map data with that elevation information. Now if that elevation information isn't correct, then no algorithm is going to be able to fix that. So sometimes there'll be edge cases where things just don't line up. We saw that the other day on the new Climb Pro update too. Now finally today, what you've seen is beta, and I have been told there is a new beta build coming out by this weekend, so things are progressing quite quickly with this functionality. What you'll see in the production release on May 2nd will be very, very similar, and I'm pretty confident people will like this new functionality, especially that elevation profile that's on all the time, looking ahead and telling you what's coming up, whether it's a climb or not. Very, very cool stuff. Alrighty, and with that, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching this one. As always, thumbs up if you've enjoyed this one, and remember to hit subscribe on this channel to be alerted to new videos coming up. Thanks for watching.